My name is Tiffany Owens. Where are you from? I am from Saginaw, Michigan, born and raised. What's it like in Saginaw? Ooh, right now, a lot of murders going on, a lot of killing going on um, that's not getting solved, and that's why I'm here today. I'll take you back a little bit. Um, it was June 7th, 2012. My son, it was his last day of, of middle school. Um, he was coming out the sixth grade. He went to stay the night with my parents um, last day of school, and that's what he wanted to do, so I let him do that. And there was a shooting that occurred in the middle of the night around 1230, and um, they fired, I believe it was like 20 rounds in my parents' house that night. And my dad got shot in the shoulder, and it also took the life of my 12-year-old son. He was pierced by a bullet through his right side, and it went through his heart and put two holes in his heart, and um, it killed him instantly. From what we know of, it was not a game retaliation from what we know of. Apparently, um, from what we know of from the streets, they said that they seen somebody. I guess some people was into it. They said they seen a guy run in my mom's new back door in their house, but there's no way they did it at 12.30 at night. The only three people was in there was the only three people in there when the shooting happened. His name was Tamaris Stewart Jr. Oh my goodness, he was an amazing kid. Um, he was very quiet, very shy, but once you got to know him, he was just an incredible kid to be around. Um, he was my protector baby always protecting me, always looking out for me, always wanted to be wherever I was at. Like, that was him. It, it was hard. It's still hard. Um, it completely changed my life. I don't want to get... It's still hard to talk about it. Um, losing my baby, I felt like I lost a part of myself. And I never get that back. And although it's been 10 years since it happened, um, I think about him every day. I just think about what kind of man he would have been, um, what kind of, you know, husband he would have been if he would have been a husband. Um, I just think about what type of career he would have had. You know, it's just so many things go through your mind when your kid is taken away from you. And it's really, really hard. And mm. my life was never the same after that day. Um, it changed tremendously, not only for me, but for my children also. Um, and then not to mention um, me being, losing my son, I also was in a domestic violence relationship too during that time. And um, my abuser, unfortunately, um, he didn't stop beating on me. The beatings didn't stop. They started right back up three days after my son was murdered. Um, so now as a grieving mother, I'm trying to grieve for my son and trying to cope with being in this domestic violence relationship at the same time. Where is he now? He is incarcerated right now. Um, I'm not sure where he's at, but he he's a, he is in state. Um, he's serving 35 to 65 years right now for a attempt murder on me and my daughter's life. Um, that happened in 2017, February 9th. He tried to... Um, he attempted to to kill me um, at my job. That was, um, mm, mm, mm. I'm sorry y'all. Uh, People look at me and they see strength, but I'm, I'm so broken on the inside. I've been through so much 
And I'm not here as a pity party, but I'm just here to inform. And to inform y'all and to make y'all aware of what's going on in my city. Um, our city need help. I need help to find out um, who not only murdered my first baby, but also I just lost my daughter also um, five and a half months ago to the same thing that's going on in our community. And it just, it just needs to stop and we need help. I have nobody in our community helping. Um, the police ain't doing nothing. The mayor, I've reached out to everybody that I could possibly reach out to. I've talked to people in Lansing. And I just need, I need some help. I need some help in solving these murders and getting justice for my babies. My daughter's name was Tamaria Stewart. She was 26 years old. Um, she was just at a party with her family and her friends. And three gentlemen decided that they wanted to crash the party. So from my understanding is they came from the back of the house um, out some bushes, it was three of them, and they just started open firing. And my daughter, she was running out the back door. So she never stood a chance. She didn't know that they were coming from that direction. And soon as she got to that back, to that back porch, she got hit twice. She was hit um, in the chest and in the upper shoulder. She was hit twice, but she didn't die on site. She passed away at the hospital um, about two hours later. What was she like? Oh my God. My baby, that was my princess, my heart, my world, all my children were, but um, I had her when when I was 17. So like she she just really, really grew me up. Um, she was the first person that I fell in love with. She was the first person to love me back unconditionally. And I just miss her. I miss her so much. No mother should have to go through what I'm going through. No parents should have to go through what I'm going through. Like we should not have to bury our children. Our children should have to bury us. Yes, I do feel like it's unfair and it's unfortunate that I'm going through this. But I know I have to keep fighting for my children because they gone and I'm still here for a reason. God kept me for a purpose. So I have to be the voice for them. I have to fight for them. I have to get justice for them. And I'm not going to stop until I do. At first, I'm not going to lie. I felt like it was unfair for me to even wake up and knowing that my kids are not physically here with me anymore. But the thing that keeps me going is that I still... I have, I have a living son left and he's 19 and that's my baby boy. And I'm gonna do everything in my power, everything in my power to make sure I'm still here from him because it's not fair for him, for me not to wanna live life anymore. But that's how I really, really felt, just being honest. I just felt like it was unfair for me to be here and they weren't, I just didn't understand that. I felt like I lived my life, I felt like if anything, he should have took me and kept my children here and gave them a chance to live life. I haven't lost my faith, but I do get angry with God and I have been angry with him. And it's okay for us to be angry with him. It's okay for us to question him because um, I did and I still do because I wanted to know why. You know, why this happened? Why you take my babies? Why my babies? But one thing I, I had to learn is that as much as it hurts, as much as it hurts my heart, I had to learn that our children are not ours. 
They're not ours. God loaned them to us. He loaned us our babies. And that's the only thing that keeps me going, too, is just knowing that. And that's what I had to do. I had to thank him every day for loaning my children to me because he could have picked any mom, any mom in the world. He could have picked anybody, anybody to be the mother of my children. But he chose me. He chose me out of everybody. He chose me to be their overseer. He chose me to be their protector. So I'm grateful for the 12 years that I had with my son. And I'm grateful for the 26 wonderful years I had with my daughter. I have so many memories, so many memories of them that literally will last me the rest of my life that keeps me happy, that keeps me smiling. Yes, I miss them, but I know that they are in a much better place than we are here on earth. And I know that I will see my babies again. I will see them again. I definitely believe God saved my life. But I don't believe God saved my life for me. I believe he saved my life for millions of, of women out here. I believe God saved my life so that I could be used as an example to show women not to give up on their faith, to always stay prayed up, to always stay encouraged. And that's just what I'm here to do. I'm here to encourage you to not lose faith, to not lose sight in who God is, to keep him first in your life. And I know that it hurts because I'm still dealing with the pain and the hurt of losing my babies. But one thing I don't give up on, and that's God. And he's all I have. And people ask me all the time, how do you get by? How do you get through? And it's God. That's my answer. I can't tell him anything else because it's, it's him that no matter how mad I am at him, no matter how angry I am at him, it's still him that I turn to. It's still him that I lean on. Because when everybody gone, when all your friends disappear and all your family is gone, all you have is him. He is your strength. He is your comfort. He is your motivator. God is my everything. He is my peace. And he is the reason why I'm sitting here today.